Okay, all credit to Gust. That intro video was fantastic. Also, Ugu so kava e, and please never let me do that again. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Blue Maxima. I'm here checking out Italia Rorona Plus, the remake cross update of the original Italia Rorona game on PlayStation Three. Which, finally, this is also coming out on PlayStation Three as well. But unfortunately, on Vita, it will be digital only. So, a couple of things I want to talk about. This is about four hours in. Th frankly, there's going to be no spoilers because nothing has happened in the story yet. <laughs> Absolutely nothing has happened in the story yet. The extent of the story after four hours is save the Italia. That's all there is to it at this point. Secondly, I have never played Italia Rorona, the original. So, for those of you looking at it for an in-depth look at how the games are different... You're just gonna have to make assumptions based off on what, based off what you see here. Wow, I can't speak. So with that said, let's go have a look at the options. Background music, sound effects, environment, sound system, voice, band, voice, about voice, movie. Yep, you can customize all of these. And by the way, I'd suggest lowering the background music because. Well, they kind of messed up the balancing because the music is always just that little bit louder than the voices and it makes them hard to hear. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to turn down the background music a bit. You've also got message, event skip, auto cross save. Yes, this game does have cross save with the PS3 version. Unfortunately, I did not have a copy of Italia Rorona Plus to try this out with. Also, there's some stuff with importing Italia Tutori and Maruru Plus save data, which is kind of odd. I, I think it affects something to do with the... Time Machine feature there is, but I haven't come across the Time Machine yet. There's also English and Japanese voice acting, so take your pick. You can also go to the dressing room to change the character's costumes. I've only got one so far, and that's the that's the free one you can get on the PlayStation Store right now for some reason. I have no idea what that's about. So yeah, you can change it to the uh, ladies' etiquette. How do I look? I wonder if this is a good fit. Yeah, it's a bit odd. You can also change the character to change your clothes, but I do not have... Oh, this is nicer than I thought. I do not have that many... Well, how is it? Costumes yet. I don't really know much about fashion. Sturky. <laughs> this game is basically cute out the arse, so... That's actually a really bad way to put it, but still, it is just so... Cutesy, it's ridiculous. So let's actually go and load a game. So if I just tap the I button here, as you can see here, this is going to be the third set of quests after about 4 hours and 15 minutes, so... Not much else other to say than that. There will be no spoilers, because this game does not have a story so far, so let's just go. Now, this game has a literal butt-ton of mechanics, but I am not going to bother explaining them because I'm going to go sleep for two days and this will give me a good opportunity to show off the voice acting because a story event will happen even though there is absolutely no story. So let's just go and have a sleep and this will automatically start the next story event. Huh, there's no voice in this. Weird. Huh. Bit odd that there's no voice acting there. The voice acting in this game seems to be a bit spread out into weird places.
Huh, interesting. So we've been given our next set of quests, which is an interesting way this game does things. Basically, every three months, you are given a new set of quests to do. And these usually involve making shit. So as you can see here, we've got three new items to make, and we have to turn them in as soon as possible. Also, our new assignment gives us some new sub-quests to do. So as you can see here, we've been given a lot of different individual quests to do. And the more of these that you get, the more of these side quests that you complete, you can fill in stamps on this bingo card. And as you can see on the right there, if you fill in a line, uh, this is, is a sort of bingo card, you get more stuff. So as you can see here, you can get 8 vouchers, which you trade in for items. You can get a strong bullet, a training lock, a, a new book, cute bombs, that is weird, but whatever. So... The main point, point of this game is synthesis, which is combining stuff to make more stuff, and more stuff means more stuff. So what we can do is we can make stuff, and we actually have an alchemy level, which determines how much of a chance we have at succeeding in making this stuff, and also how much experience we'll get for making stuff. So we can actually make five things right now, and it is a good idea, and I will make five things right now, because why not? He did say to exceed expectations, but I don't really think I'm going to be able to do that. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's just select this. So now that we've got our three items together, there are heaps of different items in this game, and I'll be able to show you how many there are in a moment. We will just make th five of these. So we've got witch cells now, and we can also give the items traits. So as we can see here... We can make it to increase max HP, we can increase max MP, defense, resist fire, there's also all sorts of... There's also all sorts of um, negative ones as well, like this item will sell for less. It's, it's a very odd system, but I am quite enjoying playing around with it to see what you can get out of it. I'll put that in the container. So now what we can do is we can actually show off the shortcut system. Now the shortcut system lets you go to pretty much any important area in the game. Thankfully, you don't need to go exploring now to find any of these. These are all there just right off the bat. So just go look around once for, like, your companions and such like that. Which I will show off eventually. We'll go to the palace front desk just for the, uh, uh, one reason. Because I actually have to show off getting side quests as well. So if we talk to this lady here, Esty. Haggle really appreciates your help. Maybe too much. The guy wanted to sing you a song. <laughs> this is just weird. So, you can also come here and actually make stuff for side quests. So, as you can see here, I can give Sturk three bombs. Unfortunately, I don't have any bombs on me right now, but if I go and make some ones and give them to him, it'll increase his friendship level, and his friendship level is actually quite important. And these quests change throughout the days system, which I'll get into a bit more later, but... Yeah, as you can see, you, you've never got a shortage of stuff to do. You can also come here for item exchange, so as you can see here... You can trade in tickets. I've got 11 of them right now, which are also vouchers. I don't know why they change them in between tickets and vouchers. Ooh, event. Um, Esty? I've been wondering. Huh? What is it? You know how Sturk calls you Senior Esty? Well, isn't he older than you? My, you're flattering. Unfortunately, I'm a bit older and have been here longer than he has. Oh? Come to think of it. I don't even know how old Sturk is. How old are you, Esty? Verona, here's a little advice from your elder. Don't ask how old someone is if that person seems older than you. Never. Under any circumstances. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. Just be more careful next time. What just happened? She was smiling and yet scary at the same time. This is the sort of humor you're working with in this game, and I actually love it. This entire just cutesy style to the Italian games just makes it so appealing to me for some reason, and I have no idea why. It's great. I just, I love the humor. <laughs> oh, Christ, I forgot to put that ad on him. <laughs> okay, Sturk. Um, 
I have to talk to you. Alright, so two things. You can hire these gentlemen. You can hire a fair few people in this game, and two of them are actually the protagonists on the other two Italia, uh, this Italia trilogy, um, Maruru and Tatori. And as you can see here, they've got their own stats, their own equipment, and you can even make equipment for them, and they actually cost money to hire. So as you can see down in the middle, just a little bit lower than the middle there, this guy actually costs 200 to hire, so we do not want to hire him because he's really expensive. He's really good though, so at least he justifies it. Huh. Looks like you finished a request. Alright, so we finished a couple of requests, so I can show off how the bingo stamps work, although I can't really succeed in making a single line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put one here, I'm going to put one here. So, and if we make a line, we get a bonus. And I will... And I can actually probably pull off a full bingo line as we play, but that'll be for a later date. Also, we can probably talk to him and hand in these items, so let's actually talk to him and hand in these items. And if you're wondering, you can earn a maximum of 8 bingo stamps around the outside, and then when you finish the main assignment for that period of time, you get the stamp in the middle automatically. So let's... Let's give him... These witch salves, which are harmless. Alright, so we've actually... We have done our quest. So now we get the stamp in the middle. So we've actually completed this, so now I can go and do whatever, do whatever the bloody hell I please, although it might be better to start exploring new areas and such, and crafting more items, because it might actually be useful in the future. However, we're just going to take the time to go to all the other shops. This is going to be a pretty long video. And I apologize if it's a bit long for your tastes. for our new dessert menu. New desserts? I saw a few in a book I just read. Really? What kind of desserts were they? Oh, I didn't really read it that carefully. Okay then, can you make one and bring it to me next time? It'll be a job request for your workshop. Alright, I should learn how to make it then. If it's good enough, I'd love to put it on the menu right away. So yeah, again, they give you... The followers can give you quests, and if you do them it increases your friendship level. Which is pretty nice, so I think I'll go and actually have a look, so we can see what exactly needs to be done. She probably has another event for us to talk about as well. Alright, let's accept... Hmm. So we could accept one of these if we wanted to. I could probably go and make a few bombs. Actually, yeah, I should do that, because his friendship level is really low, and we won't be able to hire him if he's too low a friendship level. Like you're getting used to this whole thing. Not really. I'm still learning a lot. You're doing a great job, though. I can vouch for that. Just throwing out the idea. Why don't you try accepting more challenging jobs? More challenging? I don't know if I can handle that. I'm sure you can. Nothing can be much different from what you're already doing. The jobs you've accepted actually had more specific requests to them. Specific requests? Say that the deadline for one of your jobs is in two weeks. The client might add an extra request, saying that it would actually be better if it's done in one week. Or, if someone asks for an item, he might also want that item with a higher quality. It's okay if those specific requests aren't met, but you would get more rewards if they are. Oh, I never knew about those. It's probably faster for you to just do it and see for yourself. Here's a job request from me. Got it? There's no deadline, but it would be helpful if you could bring it to me sooner than later. I won't accept the item if you don't meet my specific request this time, so be careful. Okay, I'll do my best. Anyway, what are you using this for? <laughs> I can't tell you that. I'm looking forward to it. Now I'm curious. Oh well, I'll just do the job first. Alright, so we'll accept, we'll accept that, because why not? I don't think there's any sort of... Oh, right, we have to just go and do it then. So we're going to go back to the workshop, and we're just going to have a look around at our place a little bit before we actually head out into the world. There's also a couple other different places we could go, but I don't think it's necessary at this point. So we've got a ton of ingredients we can go through, but unfortunately I, I seem to be lacking a lot of them, so... We'll just have a little bit of a look. Let's see. 
Well, we, we, wouldn't, we need to make a supplement, so let's see if we can make a good quality supplement. This game has a lot of different ways to, you know, change the crafting system around. You can get all sorts of ingredients, and you, the more ingredients you use, the more stuff you get, and the, the items you use actually affect your traits. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's actually a really interesting system. So if we just synthesize using this piece of coal, we'll see what we can do. Uh, we have made a quality... I'm not sure what quality that is. Quality 44. Okay, so we need to get higher quality ingredients before we can really get the quest done. So let's see. We. I'm not going to bother saving. I'm just going to use this as a demonstration. So we need to get some gunpowder. And gunpowder can also be resist, um, no, phlogiston, I should say. Phlogiston, which is a specific ingredient found in one area. So we can go and actually have a look at that. So we might as well do that, actually. Got nothing better to do. So let's go and do that. We can also go to the front desk to get another event. We can also go to Verona's home to get another event. But I think you've seen enough events already. The voice acting in this game is actually pretty good, all things considered. So we might as well go to the world map. Now, this game has a days system. The more you travel, the more days you use. So you have to be careful with your traveling because it can take up time. And of course, if you run out of time to do quests, the people won't be very happy with you. So, as you can see here, we've got three places we can go. The National Mines take three days and the nearby Forest Donald Togo Ruins take one. But there's also more days on top of this, so don't think it's that easy. So now that we're here, we can actually go to all sorts of different areas. And if we go to the first area, which has the Phlogiston, which is like the only area that has Phlogiston. By the way, when you're coming and doing this quest, make sure you explore both directions in the Ruins Forest first. Because for one of the quests, you need to make bombs. And if you do not know where... And Polish Powder. You need Polish Powder for the main quest. And if you don't know where Polish Powder is, which is Fest... I went all the way through the other chain before I realized that it's just the first area. You just go into the other exit. Which kind of scared me, because I was running out of days. This game's actually fairly easy. Ixie, do you want to take a break soon? Well, we just got here. I know, but I brought lunch for us. I don't want it to spoil. We didn't come here for a picnic, did we? But I thought we could do this every once in a while. Sure, I guess. Let's eat then. Okay, hold on. Ah! Whoa, what's the matter? I forgot the lunch. Are you serious? You really are clumsy. I thought I brought it. Oh, I spent a long time on it. Okay, okay, don't cry. Fine, wait right here. What? Here? Well, where are you going? It doesn't matter. Just wait there, okay? All right, I'm back. There you are. Where did you go? I went to make something. Look. Oh, it looks delicious. But how did you... I made it with ingredients that I found around here. Luckily, I brought my trusty pan with me. Try it out. Okay. Mmm. It's so good. Oh, yeah? That's good to hear. Yeah, it's great. Especially this meat. What kind of meat is this? Well, the only meat I could find around here is... <laughs> huh? What did you say? Yeah, never mind. I'm glad you like it. Aren't you gonna have some? Oh, I had enough while I was cooking it. But why aren't you looking at me? Ixie? This meat? Are you full? Let's get back to work. Hey, wait! What did you make me eat? Ixie? That is concerning. So, the main idea of this game... Actually, this is a little bit different from Maruru and Totoria. At least what I played in Maruru is a bit different because... Moving around, like, this area would actually take days off, and getting into fights would take days off. But this game seems a little bit more lax with its daytime restrictions. So, uh, so as long as you... Every time you have to do a day event that causes days to pass, you will know about it. And you will be able to choose not to do it if you don't want to. So, Gathering is coming up to these spots, and picking up everything that you see. And items can do things like degrade over time, and... Silly stuff like that. So, what you want to do is you just want to be constantly looking. There's also golden spots which have high quality materials sometimes. We didn't find that much Phlogiston, so what we're going to do... 
is we're going to hit the travel menu. And we've lost days. And then we go to the fest area again, and it'll refresh the gathering spots. So we can just go and gather stuff, and stuff, and stuff, and stuff. And there's also combat, which I will show off as soon as I get enough Phlogiston to make a decent amount of bombs. Bombs are probably a great item to demonstrate as well. Uh, how much Phlogiston is that anyway? What's in my basket? So, I got a lot of bombs. I got three, four, five Phlogiston. Yeah, that'll do. You can also come in here and do things like change your equipment, and you can craft stuff as well, like... I believe I- yeah, this durable skirt here, I actually crafted that. I'll show that off when I get back to town. And you can also check your assignment and your quests here. You can actually press L to check your assignments from here. But the funny thing is, is that you can't check your... Can't check your side quest from there. I, I would like to be able to check my side quest from there, to tell you the truth, but you can't. And if we come back in here, we can also go to the library. Now you can check your help, you can also check all the character details. The art in this game is really nice. You can also check monsters and what items they drop. Well, not what items they drop. Huh. Oh yeah, there it... Oh well, it tells you where they're found and all that. Then you go to items and then you can check where they drop. By changing the page. So as you can see here, the Stimstone is found at the National Mines from... What appears to be a monster? Oh. Oh, oh, it tells you if there is a monster that drops it, okay. It's a little bit confusing, but, I mean, it still works fine once you get used to it. I've only been playing for four hours, so... Alright, let's go to another area to show off the combat. Do I want to go up against wolves? I'll go up again... Oh yeah, okay, I'll go to the watchtower and fight everything that's here. So this game is very simple, in, in terms of its combat. If you get the hit in, you will usually get the first attack. But if you don't, there's a random chance. Every Everyone has skills that uses MP. All Italia, um, they're not Italias, um, what are they called? Uh, alchemists can use items, but non-alchemists can't. So we throw this item in, and it does a ton of damage. You also saw down the bottom there, the, if you press L and R, it'll do an assist attack if you have the... Assist saved up for it. So combat in this game is very simple. But thankfully it's also enjoyable, especially with the items. Wow, she can do a lot of damage. 39 damage. What? I don't even know why, why she can do that much damage. That's nuts. It's good to see she's, she's at least strong enough. And the companions are all different. They've all got their own strengths and weaknesses. Like, for some reason, she has a Derringer, and when she fires it, she... Um, it, it does fire damage for some reason. My favorite move in, I think it was Maruru, you can take along Tatori as a partner, and she calls out literally a mini version of herself, which throws a gigantic bomb at something. I just thought that was absolutely hilarious. And I hope I get to see that again, but... All things considered, it's not the worst thing in the world that I haven't seen it yet. I probably will, because again, you can't have them as partners in this game. And you do get items for successfully finishing battles and killing enemies. Combat's usually a lot harder than this. I'll, I'll, I might go to the mines and show that off. Show off harder combat, but frankly, with with freaking Rorona doing 40 damage a hit, I'll probably steamroll everything in there too. And we'll just grab all these. Alright, we'll actually go to another area now, because why not? You've seen some of the combat, but we'll um, go and do a little bit more. We'll go back to the world map. You can also go back to the workshop directly from that menu, which is a really useful feature. It's much nicer than having to... Ooh. Ooh, that's not going to be nice. Uh, let's see... We'll go to the Spirit's Path. I, I don't care about failing the quests. I won't bother saving. I'll just... I'll just show off how to do them anyway, because why not? We'll, we'll gather some stuff here. Also, that ghost is acting really weird. Alright, come here. We'll show off a little bit of harder combat. Okay. 
her on the ghost. He has a bloody laser beam for some reason. I cannot imagine why. We've also got uh, assist defenses here. You earn assist, obviously, but just by playing battles and such. It's a it's a simple system, but it serves the game perfectly. When you want to have your focus on the when you want to have your focus on the crafting system of the game, having a simplistic battle system like this is probably the best way to handle it. Also, I don't know why they're still throwing blue poonies at me at this at this part of the game because. They're the easiest enemies to fight. As you can see, I can usually take them out in just one shot, but you know the drill. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna head back to the workshop now. We've done a fair few things, so we can just head right back to the workshop and get this crafting done. I forget I forget. These little icons in the top left don't tell you exactly what quest they are, so you have to go looking for which one is the one you're doing. He, he, oh, that's not good. I better only make one bomb. So we'll just go and do some synthesis, make a bomb. Thankfully, I can only make one of these. We need one of them. Okay, now we'll synthesize this. I hope I'm still on time. And you can give it different, different things here. And you can choose, you can choose to just... Ignore traits entirely, which is quite nice. Now we'll go straight to the palace hallway to hit- uh, no, not the palace hallway. We need to go to the front desk to do this, my bad. This is probably the most boring look at an Italia game that you could possibly have, but that's the basic idea. Oh, event. I know you travel a lot, but do you ever go to places with really tough enemies? Well, yes, I, I guess so. Why the sudden interest? The thing is, I feel like my swordsmanship's been getting a little rusty lately. If I don't do something soon, I might drop below Sturk. What? Really? You're stronger than Sturk? Well, maybe not stronger per se, but I am older and that should count for something. I mean, use it or lose it, right? And I certainly haven't been using it behind this desk. Interesting. Can we take her as a companion now? No, we can't, but we will report that bomb request in right now. How much? Oh, hang on. What was that quality of... Oh, yeah. Normal. Okay, fair enough. We'll just report all these in. Get a reward for it. So that was a basically look at Atelier Tutorial. Let's go and get some more stamps. Atelier Tutorial, Atelier Rabona. God, I can't keep the name straight. I'm sorry. That was a... That hat! That was a basic look at... The Italia games in general, really, and I actually enjoy all of them, to be fair. With To be fair, it's just, it's a very enjoyable series for some reason. It's fun to just craft this stuff for some reason, and I have no idea why. So we'll get a couple of bingos here, so I get a new book with new recipes and more defense. Um, I'm, I didn't mean to do that. So, it's fun just going around this big world and doing quests and fighting monsters and making stuff. Making stuff is a really big part of this game and I appreciate that it's such a big part of it because crafting stuff is fun. It's fun going finding ingredients, it's fun keeping track of everything even though it can be a bit overwhelming. Learned how to make an ice bomb and a battle bomb. Don't even know what a battle bomb means. You can also come here, save, load, network, save, network, load. Hello, you're not around very often. Why don't you take a break and hang out with me for a bit? Maybe. We can also go to the beefy weapon shop. Actually, we will go there just to show off one thing that's here that's actually really important. So you can come to these guys and buy stuff. So as you can see here, you can buy phlogiston and you can buy just stuff that you might possibly need. You can also buy things like skirts. You can also come here to synthesize weapons after a specific point in the story. So as you can see here, I can make things like nylon feather, feather, and we can turn that into a working outfit for one of the companions that we have, which is very convenient. 
So it's all a balancing act between making, doing quests and making items and making your friends happy and doing all sorts of stuff like that. We might as well go have a walk around outside for a little bit. The, the frame rate tends to drop here a little bit. The frame rate drops throughout the game in general, but thankfully it's a turn-based RPG where your movements do not really matter that much. So... It's not a problem in the slightest, really. Not at all. Not one bit. So we can, we can just go have a little bit of a walk around. Unfortunately, it's hard to tell which buildings you can actually enter. This is actually Rorona's house. So, it's it's a bit odd that there's all these buildings here and you can't enter, like, any of them except a couple. So, that was a look at Atelier Rorona. A simple combat system. A gigantically complex crafting system. What should I make? And lots of gathering, lots of cute fun and a game that I would happily recommend hey we can actually make we can actually make two of these and go make a new set of armor that would be actually kind of interesting so you know what screw it we'll do that while I talk about my overall feelings I enjoy this game a lot and I would actually recommend it to people especially those of you who haven't really played a well would I recommend it to someone who hasn't played a JRPG before maybe but oh we've, we've made a bad quality one but that's okay we can actually go and invest that into armor now. So let's go and actually go, let's go back to the weapon shop. You can also go to the sundry shop to buy stuff. You can there's a well outside Verona's house. You go and get water from. It's it's it's, it's a it's a fun combination of general RPG stuff and it's a fun combination of general RPG stuff and. Just synthesizing stuff, and it's quite nice. So we can even give this thing traits, and it has even more benefits to it, which we can equip to our companion. And he'll... And he won't get any sort of boost from it whatsoever. Well, he will get a boost to his speed. I guess that's worth the effort, but... Still. So it's just... It's a, it's a lot of fun to play this game. I got hooked when I first picked it up, and... I played four hours straight, and I'm like, well, this is actually a really good point to show the game off. There's no story going on, but there's a good time to show the basic basics of the game. And also, you can jump with the circle button. Also, this is weird. Barrel! She says that all the time. Very easily amused, Ramona is. And I will admit, this is actually making me want to go and pick up Tori and Maruru again. I played Maruru for a few hours, but I had to put it down because there are other games that needed the attention. I actually wanted to do a video on it back when it came out, but I didn't feel confident enough in it to actually do a video on it. But I hope I've showed off this enough. There are a lot of different little things. And I, I, I especially like this book where it tells you absolutely everything you could possibly need to know. Although the initial tutorials are a bit weird, like the very first tutorial has some gratuitous grammar errors in the first couple of pictures that they show you to try and show off the game, but then it just completely fixes itself, and I have no idea why that is. But yeah, that was a look at Italia Rorona, the Alchemist of Ireland Plus. Oh, God, I do not know what the names are of these games. Good Lord. There's all sorts of different things I haven't gone into here yet, like the popularity and all the different items having all the different effects and all that, but as you can see here, it's a very competent RPG. Looks great. I like the soundtrack too, have a listen. I like it, I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun to listen to. I got I got nothing else to say, folks. This is just this is a very, very competent, very enjoyable crafting RPG, and I would recommend that you all buy it. Speaking of buying details, this game will be up next week on the American PlayStation Store. For $40, I believe. I imagine it will be. It'll be digital only. It was supposed to be up on the European store already, but apparently Sony of Europe had a mix-up and it never went up, so I imagine it'll go up with your next store update as well. I don't know why it hasn't gone up already, but yeah, it's been like this for like two days. So, sorry folks. I actually got to play it before you did. I'm surprised. That usually doesn't happen, and 
I was actually a little bit surprised that this would actually come out earlier in Europe than it did in America. That usually doesn't happen, especially with digital-only titles. But nevertheless, this has been Blue Maxima. I want to go see Sturk's funny hat again. It's actually Rorona's hat, but for some reason he... For some reason I decided to put it on him, and it just looks freaking ridiculous! I love it. I absolutely love it. Alright, this has been Blue Maxima. I like this game a lot and you should all buy it. I'll see you all next time.